I never thought I'd find myself here, plotting vengeance against the woman I once loved. Yet, here I am, consumed by a fury so intense it eclipses every other emotion I've ever known. My name is Marcus Reed, and this is the story of how my perfect marriage unraveled and how I began to exact my cruel revenge. It was a chilly autumn evening when everything changed. My wife, Elena, and I had been married for twelve years, building a life together that seemed unbreakable. We were both ambitious professionals, Elena, a successful architect, and I, a dedicated investment banker. We decided to take a trip to New Orleans, a city vibrant with life and culture, to celebrate our tenth anniversary. As we navigated through the bustling streets, Elena was her usual self, charming, vivacious, and utterly devoted. Little did I know, beneath her radiant exterior lay a web of deceit that would soon come crashing down. The day before our departure, Elena mentioned meeting a client for a project discussion. I trusted her implicitly, believing our relationship was built on honesty and mutual respect. That evening, as I was working late at the office, a colleague named Jason approached me with an unsettling revelation. Marcus, have you noticed Elena acting differently lately? Jason asked, his voice tinged with concern. I brushed it off initially. Different how? He's not sure, man. She's been secretive, staying late, and there are whispers about her being seen with other men. My heart pounded. Elena was everything to me. I couldn't fathom her being unfaithful. But doubt is a pernicious thing, and the seed had been planted. The trip to New Orleans was meant to rekindle our romance, but it only heightened my suspicions. On our second night, after a delightful dinner cruise along the Mississippi River, Elena suggested we explore a local jazz club. I agreed, wanting to enjoy the evening together. As we entered the dimly lit venue, the sultry sounds of a saxophone filled the air. I noticed Elena's eyes light up as she scanned the room. It was then that I saw him, Derek, a suave man with an easy smile, seated alone at a table. Elena approached him, her demeanor warm and engaging. They talked animatedly, laughing and sharing stories. I tried to shake off the unease gnawing at me convincing myself it was nothing more than friendly conversation. However, the way Elena leaned in, her hand lightly touching Derek's arm, felt too intimate. That night, as I lay in bed, my mind raced with doubts. The following day, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I discreetly followed Elena, hoping to catch her in the act. My worst fears were confirmed when I saw her enter a hotel room with Derek disappearing inside. The sight of Elena with another man shattered my world. But instead of confronting her immediately, anger fueled a more calculated approach. I knew I couldn't afford an impulsive divorce. Our lives, careers, and shared assets were too intertwined. Instead, I chose to gather irrefutable evidence. Back home, I began my mission. I installed hidden cameras in our home, set up voice recorders, and even accessed Elena's phone to monitor her communications. The footage was damning. Elena was entangled with not one, but eight different men over the past year, many of whom were my closest friends. The betrayal cut deeper, knowing that the men she chose were people I trusted implicitly. Among them was Jason, my colleague who had first hinted at her infidelity. The duplicity was unbearable, but I masked my pain with a veneer of calm. As the months passed, my collection of evidence grew. I meticulously documented each encounter, ensuring I had everything I needed to dismantle Elena's facade. But revenge was no longer just about proving her infidelity. It was about making her suffer as deeply as I did. My first target was Jason. His wife, Laura, was a kind-hearted woman who trusted him implicitly. I knew how to exploit that trust. Under the guise of a concerned friend, I approached Laura, sharing the incriminating evidence I had against Elena. Laura was devastated, her world collapsing as she faced the reality of her husband's betrayal. But my revenge was far from complete. 
I wanted to ensure that Elena's actions had far-reaching consequences. I reached out to others on my list, friends of Elena's lovers, knowing that each revelation would not only destroy their marriages, but also tarnish Elena's reputation irreparably. Each meeting was meticulously planned. I would present them with undeniable proof of their spouse's infidelity, watching as their lives unraveled just as mine had. The satisfaction was intoxicating, but it came at a cost. The once vibrant man I was began to wither under the weight of my own darkness. As my campaign of revenge intensified, so did Elena's desperation. She noticed the sudden strain in our relationship, the late nights, the unexplained absences. Her anxiety grew, and I reveled in her suffering, knowing that each step she took towards reconciliation was met with my calculated sabotage. Elena's attempts to salvage our marriage only fueled my determination. She sought counseling, tried to communicate, but I remained steadfast in my pursuit of vengeance. My actions became more brazen. I orchestrated scenarios where her lies were exposed in public, ensuring that no corner of our community was untouched by her deceit. One evening, Elena confronted me, her eyes filled with tears and confusion. Marcus, what's happening? Why are you doing this? I looked into her eyes. The love we once shared now replaced by cold resolve. You betrayed me, Elena. Every lie. Every affair. It's all my fault now. Her sobs echoed in the room as I walked away, leaving her to face the ruins of her life without offering a shred of empathy. The path I had chosen was lonely, but I couldn't turn back. The taste of revenge was too sweet, the pain too deep to abandon. My vengeance extended beyond exposing Elena's affairs. I began manipulating mutual friends, ensuring they turned against her, isolating her from any semblance of support. Each step was deliberate, each action calculated to maximize her suffering. Elena's professional life began to crumble as well. I leaked information about her unethical practices to her employers, ensuring her reputation as an architect was tarnished. Contracts were pulled, and clients lost trust in her, forcing her to take on lower-paying, less prestigious projects. The city that once admired her now shunned her. But I wasn't finished yet. I targeted her social circle, planting seeds of doubt and mistrust. Invitations to gatherings were withheld and her friends began to distance themselves, unable to reconcile the woman they thought they knew with the one I was unveiling. The isolation was unbearable for Elena, but it only strengthened my resolve. She was spiraling, and I was determined to see her hit rock bottom. Yet, amidst my quest for revenge, I couldn't escape the hollow emptiness gnawing at my soul. The person I was becoming was a far cry from the man I once was. In the midst of my vendetta, I encountered Sarah Thompson, a woman who had suffered similar heartbreak. Her husband, Greg, had been unfaithful, leaving her devastated and seeking a way to reclaim her life. Our shared pain forged an unlikely alliance, and together we devised a plan to dismantle the lives of those who had wronged us. Sarah brought resources and a network that I lacked. Together, we identified targets men who had betrayed their wives, friends who had lied, and colleagues who had manipulated us. Our methods were ruthless but effective, ensuring that no one was spared from our retribution. Our partnership grew stronger as we shared stories of betrayal, finding solace in our mutual quest for justice. However, the lines between right and wrong began to blur as we delved deeper into the darkness. The thrill of revenge overshadowed any remnants of our former selves, leaving us both changed forever. Elena, now a shadow of her former self, reached out to me one final time. Desperate and broken, she pleaded for reconciliation, claiming she had ended all her affairs and wanted to rebuild our marriage. Her vulnerability tugged at something deep within me, a flicker of the love we once shared. But revenge had consumed me. I couldn't bring myself to forgive her, no matter how sincere she seemed. Instead, 
I saw this as an opportunity to strike one last blow. I manipulated the situation, ensuring that any attempt at reconciliation would further expose her deceit and deepen her despair. The final act of my revenge was planned meticulously. I arranged for Elena to receive a prestigious job offer in a city far away, under the guise of starting fresh. However, I sabotaged the offer, ensuring it was a dead end, leaving her stranded and without any means to escape the fallout of her actions. As Elena packed her belongings, tears streaming down her face, I watched from a distance, knowing that my actions would leave her utterly alone. Yet a pang of regret gnawed at me, a reminder of the man I had become. Just as I began to feel a sense of closure, a new threat emerged. One of Elena's former lovers, Daniel, discovered the extent of my manipulations. He threatened to expose our secret alliance, jeopardizing everything Sarah and I had built. The tension between us reached a boiling point, and our partnership began to fracture under the strain of mutual distrust. Sarah, feeling betrayed, distanced herself from me, leaving me to face the consequences of my actions alone. The isolation I had inflicted upon Elena now mirrored my own, as I found myself entangled in a web of deceit and retribution without an escape. As I stood on the precipice of my own downfall, I realized that my quest for revenge had spiraled out of control. The lines between victim and perpetrator had blurred, and I was left questioning whether my actions had truly brought me the closure I sought. Elena, now a broken woman with nothing left, disappeared from our lives entirely. The city moved on, and so did I, or so I thought. The hollow satisfaction of revenge had faded, replaced by a lingering emptiness that no amount of retribution could fill. But the cycle of vengeance was far from over. New whispers began to surface, hinting at more hidden affairs and deeper betrayals. The shadows of deceit continued to loom, promising that my journey was far from complete. As I contemplated my next move, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The darkness within me yearned for more, and the path ahead remained shrouded in uncertainty. The story of Marcus Reed and his relentless pursuit of revenge was far from finished, leaving the door open for what was yet to come. The shadows that had fueled my need for revenge were no longer lurking in the background. They had consumed me entirely. My life had become a twisted tapestry of secrets, lies, and relentless vengeance. The satisfaction I'd felt in those early days, exposing Elena and her lovers, had long since turned hollow. I realized I was fighting not just to hurt her, but to fill an emptiness within myself that revenge could never satisfy. Elena had disappeared, her presence wiped from our city and our social circle, as though she'd never existed. My alliance with Sarah had crumbled as well, and, in the fallout, she had chosen to sever all ties with me. The bitter irony wasn't lost on me. I had orchestrated the downfall of my wife's lovers, yet now it was I who stood alone, isolated in the same darkness I'd once inflicted upon her. But there was one person left, the man who threatened to unravel everything I had worked for, Daniel. He was one of Elena's former lovers, a slick, arrogant executive who had initially gone unnoticed in my web of vengeance. He had been clever enough to keep his own affairs hidden, and now he had information that could expose my entire operation. If he revealed the depth of my manipulations, every ounce of retribution I had dealt would be for nothing. The evening of our meeting arrived, set in a quiet, dimly lit bar on the outskirts of town. Daniel was already seated, nursing a drink with a smug expression that only intensified my loathing for him. I took a seat across from him, my face a mask of indifference. Marcus, he said with a slight nod, his voice dripping with arrogance. I know exactly what you've been up to. The affairs, the ruined friendships, the calculated destruction. But see, I don't want to hurt you. I just want a little leverage. I leaned forward, matching his tone. You really think you can use me, Daniel? If you think you're the first arrogant fool to try, you're wrong. He smiled, leaning back. 
I don't want to use you. I want to make a deal. I stay silent about your actions, and in exchange, you give me a cut of whatever you gained from this whole mess. It's simple. I laughed bitterly. The only thing you'll get from me, Daniel, is what you deserve, and I have a feeling you'll hate every bit of it. As he stared, his confidence flickering, I realized just how deep I had fallen into this darkness. I no longer cared about hiding or consequences. I was past the point of return, and the only way forward was to finish what I started. Leaving the bar that night, I concocted my final act of revenge. I knew Daniel well enough to understand his weaknesses. He was impulsive, greedy, and above all, careless when it came to covering his own tracks. I spent the next few days carefully monitoring his activities, delving into the web of lies he had spun in his professional life. It wasn't long before I discovered his latest scheme, a fraudulent investment fund targeting unsuspecting clients. With the evidence in hand, I set up a meeting with his company's board of directors, presenting them with everything they needed to bring him down. As expected, they were horrified, and within days, Daniel's career lay in tatters. The irony of it was delicious. He'd tried to use my secrets as leverage, only to have his own corruption exposed. The day after his public disgrace, I received an anonymous package at my door. Inside was a simple note, scribbled in a shaky hand. You've taken everything from me, but know this, Marcus. You can't outrun karma forever. I held the note, feeling the weight of his words settle heavily over me. Perhaps he was right. I had burned so many bridges, cut so many people out of my life, that there was no one left to turn to. My revenge had become an obsession that had drained me of every ounce of humanity, leaving behind a shell of the man I once was. Days turned into weeks, and the silence grew louder. The isolation I had inflicted on Elena had now trapped me. I hadn't spoken to Sarah since our fallout, nor had I reached out to anyone else in my life. My mind swirled with memories of the love I had once shared with Elena, the dreams we'd had for the future. It was difficult to reconcile the memories of happiness with the bitter reality I had created. One night, sitting alone in the dark, I realized that everything I had done, all the carefully crafted revenge, all the manipulations, had only left me emptier. In seeking to destroy Elena, I had destroyed myself as well. My actions had been nothing more than a reflection of my own pain, projected outward. I considered reaching out to Sarah to rebuild the connection we'd once had. But when I finally picked up the phone, I found myself unable to dial her number. She had moved on, and it was time for me to do the same, to find a way to let go of the darkness that had consumed me. I drove to the lake cabin, the one I had bought with the intention of surprising Elena on our anniversary all those years ago. It was quiet, untouched a relic of the life we'd once planned. I spent the weekend there, reflecting on the choices I had made, the people I had hurt, and the emptiness that now filled the void where my heart had once been. As I packed up to leave, I decided to make one last gesture. I would write a letter, an admission of guilt, and send it to Elena, wherever she might be. She deserved the truth, a recognition of the wrongs I had committed against her, even if it came too late. I would leave her with one final message, not of anger or hate, but of honesty. Months passed, and I began the slow, arduous process of rebuilding my life. I left the city, sold the house, and moved to a quieter place where I could find some semblance of peace. The memories of what I had done remained, but they no longer held power over me. Then, one evening, I received a letter with no return address. Inside was a simple handwritten note in familiar handwriting. Thank you for the truth, Marcus. It doesn't undo the past, but it brings a strange sort of peace. I hope you find peace, too. Elena. In that moment, I felt a flicker of the person I once was. Perhaps I had finally come to the end of my journey through darkness, my own cruel revenge now a distant shadow in my past. 
The door had closed on that chapter, but somewhere, a new one awaited. As I stared out at the horizon, I allowed myself to hope, just a little, that I might finally leave the shadows behind.